Good evening and welcome to Mami 101. As we approach the end of our first season, I cannot thank you enough for always tuning in and helping us grow this one-of-a-kind show. And it's my deepest and most sincere wish that it has been an enjoyable and informative experience for you. With only two more episodes to go, I hope you'll stay with us to the end of the season and join us again next season when we're back bigger and better. And now, today's show. Here is Mami News. We have been focusing on school and education in the last few episodes, but how about we make it a little less formal this time? Everybody needs some help to get through the day sometimes, especially with kids in the house. And for that reason, here are a few life hacks for you moms. Hey guys, so I've wanted to make a video like this for ages. These are my mum hacks, but to be honest, some of them you don't have to be a mum to do. Some of them are just life hacks that I've just picked up along the way and that I do. And some of these you might think, I can't believe she does that. But some of these you might be like, that is gonna save you loads of time, that's really useful. Uh, so I hope some of these are. And if you like this kind of thing, definitely give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it, get straight into it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Okay, so hack number one is basically a way to store your bibs. I just bought an adhesive hook like so, stick it onto the back of your high chair and then you always have bibs to hand. Okay, so if you have a filthy car like me, get yourself a cereal container. I just bought this one from Poundland. You can put your rubbish in it and it has a lid for when you're driving and it's ideal for the kids. I really like this next hack as a way to display and store your coloring books and coloring pens. Just buy yourself a really cheap dish drying rack like this one and display it like so. Right, I love having a retractable clothesline. It is just so easy and space saving and great to have in the garden and it also makes an awesome limbo. In our house, we have a snack drawer for my boys. I just load it up with healthy snacks and they can help themselves. Right, for the next one, if you ever need to remove labels from jars or bottles like this one, if you just use some nut butter, either peanut butter or almond butter, just leave it on for a few minutes and it comes straight off. With bottles like this, there's a few things you can do. I like to make kids cleaners in these little spray bottles so that when I'm cleaning the windows or the house, the boys can help. They love to help out and I don't think they actually clean that much, but I know that this is a safe cleaner for them to use and it sort of allows me to get things done while they're kind of helping me and spraying it like crazy. Also in a bottle like this, we fill one up with malt vinegar and then use this to spray on our chips. We've also put our olive oil into a spray bottle like this to avoid using too much. If your children don't like brushing their teeth, get yourself an electric toothbrush and your children will love brushing their teeth and their teeth will be so clean. When the bath toys get dirty in this house and grubby and just general toys get sticky with food, etc., I'm so lazy that I just have to throw it into the washing machine and wash it on a hot wash. Or you can also put it in the dishwasher and when I put it in the dishwasher, I again wash it slightly on a hotter wash to make sure they're really clean. So in the summer, my boys spend all their time in the garden, so I like to leave drinks and cups outside for them so that they can keep hydrating. Um, I just bought one of these containers from Amazon. It was really, really cheap, and I just fill it up with water or squash or whatever I want to put in it, and I leave it outside on the table with cups, and they can just help themselves throughout the day. If you have fabric chairs like we do, you will probably want to protect them from your children. We just bought this oil cloth from Kath Kids In and also got a staple gun as well. And I just roughly cut out the fabric around the chair size, flip the chair over and then staple gun the fabric to the bottom. And voila, it keeps them safe with this cover. And this also works really well on tabletops and like kids tabletops as well. Okay, so to avoid putting an elastic band around your wrapping paper and it's snagging or creasing, I just put a paper towel roll over mine and it keeps it all together. Here's a hack to save money on scented candles. Just use vanilla extract, two tablespoons in a mug, put it into the oven at 150 for about 45 minutes to an hour and your house will smell like a bakery. When your child's unwell, save empty tissue boxes so that one can act as a bin. Right, the next hack is simple but so useful. Pack school bags the night before and put them in the car the night before so you're ready to go in the morning. 
If you have a rug that moves a lot, get yourself a glue gun and glue the bottom of it. Obviously wait for the glue to dry before you flip it back over, but when you flip it over it won't budge. You could even do this on baby socks as well. If you have a toddler that rolls over non-stop when you're trying to change their nappy, just put your leg over their tummy like this and it will make it a lot more difficult for them to roll over. <laughs> Right, here's an oldie but a goodie hack. When your child has a cough, rub vapor rub onto their feet, put socks onto their feet, and then during the night it will help them cope with their cough. For my last hack, if you have a baby that's sensitive to light, you will love this product. It's called Magic Blackout, and it does just that, just blacks out the room. It comes in a roll, and you just stick it to the window, and it kind of sticks itself to it, like magnetizes to it, and it makes the room so dark. Last week on the show, we had a very young lady, Leah, who has taken up uh, early childhood education as a career. But today, this week, we have someone who has been doing it for 13 years, Madam Judith. Thank you so much for joining us. And I wanted us to have at least a different kind of perspective from someone who has been doing it for so much longer than our previous guest had. So, Kari Busana. Thank you. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you do. What does being an early childhood educator mean? An early childhood educator is a person who deals with the children, especially on the educational part of it. Mm. Yes. What is the age group that you mostly deal with? We deal with three to six years. Three to six years. Yeah. Why is that so? Because I remember when I was starting out in school, I started when I was two. Two? Yeah, so how come? <laughs> <laughs> so I finished high school when I was 17. So I don't know why uh, nowadays they don't take children any younger than three. Is there a reason for that? The reason is we, when we take a child for less than two years, a child of two years has no language, especially. They have not developed a lot of language. So communicating with this child is very hard. Yeah. So we take a three who mm. is now having language to communicate with the, the teachers. Yeah. yeah. Does it mean if my child has a good language skills, they can start school at, at two years old? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> there are so many things we look at. Yeah. Not only the age. Yeah. The individual differences. There are some children who won't mature very fast yeah. and there are those ones who do not mature very fast. Mm. So you can find even a child of four years but has no language. True. So we do not actually look at the, the age as per se mm. but other things the child can be able to do. But the age that you do recommend is three years yeah, old? Yeah, three. And when I want my, my child to start school, yeah. what are some of the things that I should be looking at before I choose the right school for my child? The 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 whatever the things the child has already acquired like the language we are talking about yeah. is the child potty trained mm. that is can she go to the loose herself or something like mm. that mm. because when you take the child to the teachers with the pampas mm. it is now another hard work <laughs> on, the, on the teachers so what do i do then if my child isn't potty trained yet do i just not take them to school no and you you train the child because at the age of two years is when the, the, that training is very yeah. relevant. Yeah. yeah. Also, you have like a year before they start yeah. school. Mm -hmm. And also things like, um, is it f too far away from my house? What if I really like a school, but it's a bit far from my house? Is it something I should sacrifice? My yeah. child waking up a bit earlier than normal? Yeah, that one is a sacrifice, which is not very good for the child also. Yeah, yeah. Because these children, when they are at that tender age, yeah. they need a lot of rest also. Yes. At the same time, they need to play. Now, when we take in the co Kenyan context, mm. when you take a child of two years to school, and the school is very far, the child will just be sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> In the, but some of the parents, maybe they do not afford the transport themselves. Yeah. So you will have the school bus. Yeah. Some of them are very crafty. Yeah. They, they, maybe the matatus and all that. So this child will not be feeling at ease when the child is school, reaches the school because when it is too far, the child is already tired. Before they even get Before there. getting to the class even itself. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. What about, because I'm, I'm looking around for a school for my child. And w the one thing that I do see is that it's very expensive. And the ones that are not expensive uh, probably don't have the same facilities that I would like for my child. So how, do you, how can you make that decision to find a, the good balance between what's cost effective and what's quality education? First, we look for the quality. Expenses, we, that one will come later. Mungu <laughs> <laughs> 
also as a, you look for the quality in the environment of the school how is the school like mm. the ventilation the classrooms the seats and all that mm. ventilation and that's actually something many people don't consider yeah because uh, you will get a child in a crowded area the child will be infected with the diseases from other children yeah so ventilation is very important yeah. if the place should be light we should be well lit mm. the air spaces are there mm. and it is not very crowded mm. and then you look at the cleanliness of the school because if the school is dirty the child will be infected yeah and this one will spread to the other children also mm. so when you are getting a preschool for the child look at the 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 compound also how big is it for the children to play mm -hmm. what is the security in the school are the children enclosed in an environment because there are cases where the children get lost yeah. if the school is not well fenced yeah. and then if they are many and they are out of reach of the, the all of the the teachers may be few and the children are many so security is very important also when mm. you're looking for a school mm. you get a school which is well secured the classrooms are well lit yeah. well ventilated Air, the air is there mm. and it is uh, clean clean look at the toilets also when you're looking for the school how are they cleaned how often so that the child does not miss mm. because these are children they are children they like playing and all that look at where is that there is the is there enough water in that school mm. for the children to clean their hands maybe after the washrooms or after taking their snacks and all that mm. Mm. after playing and all that yeah what about the uh, the ratio how many teachers to how many students you would say is the appropriate the ministry recommend recommends 1 to 20 okay yeah a oh. uh, class should have a, between 20 to 25 mm. but this one they, they should have two teachers mm. a class of 20 to 25 they should have two teachers because these children are very young especially in the baby class yeah. they do not know even <laughs> to take instructions yeah. so the teacher they listen for be, two seconds and, yeah, and then the, the, the attention span is very low yeah so you need several teachers maybe two teachers per class for the, the, the for about 25 children mm. yeah and for that young one yeah when mm. you just started school how much time do you think is appropriate or how much time is recommended to spend in school when they start Mm, the children they they go to school from 8 to na to 3 in the evening mm -hmm. that's the the maximum they can do mm. but not all of this is for learning okay part of it is for most of it is for playing and sleeping and sleeping <laughs> <laughs> so then why can't uh, my child just sleep at home no your home is they cannot not in they can only interact with you yeah but in school they also interact with other children yes. look at you you are the father the mother and the only first one child yeah. the child will not acquire language very fast why because you have the adult language and the child language is not there yes you'll be talking to the child like an adult yes. so this child will not talk very fast because is the, the adult language is what is common in the house yeah. so it's good to take the child to the school around that time mm. so that they socialize they also acquire other characters which can only be gotten from school and not in the house mm. yeah and what about um private and public nursery schools is there really is there What, which one do you prefer? Which one is better for you, our kids, would you say? I would prefer private. Why is that? Because of the, 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 they are keen. The ratio also? The ratio is also there. Because in the public school, the children are many. Yeah. And the teachers are few. Mm. So the individual attention is not there. Mm. But in the private sector, individual attention is there. So the child will be learning in, as an individual, not as a group. Yeah. yeah. But what about the uh, curriculum? Is it any different or do you think also the public one is also has a good curriculum? The, the, the curriculum is the same. Oh, it's the same? Yeah. So the only difference is the quality time the child yeah. spends with the teacher? With the teacher. Oh. The curriculum is the same and also in the private we have also other different modes. Mm. We have the Montessori in some private. Which was my next question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Montessori and the and normal. And the Dicese. Oh, I don't know the Dicese. What's the Dicese? Dicese. <laughs> This one is the one from the Ministry of Education uh. the, where it is developed from the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. Okay. They are the one who give us the guideline mm. to use. So this is, is the normal one or is it another is different one? No, it's a normal one. Oh, the one the we use one. in schools in Kenya. Oh. Yeah. So is it uh, which one is better would you say between the Dicese which is something new that yeah. I've learned today and <laughs> the and Montessori? Uh, I would ra rather the 
the sese because it is composed of several curriculum. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It has several of them. And you have private mm -hmm. schools doing the sese yeah, as yes, well? Yes, they, they do. Oh, because most of these private schools that I see are doing Montessori. No, and those, most parents think those are international ones. Ah. Yeah, those are the ones which are dealing with Montessori, most of them. So do you think then that if a child starts off with Montessori, mm -hmm. then when they get into the 844 system, is it uh, more difficult for them than when they do disaster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You agree, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. oh. It's more difficult because in Montessori they learn around with materials. Yes. Yeah, but the sense is more of academic. Okay. So when they go to our Kenyan schools, which is more of academic than what it is, so the, 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 this child will not be able to cope very fast. Culture shock. They'll be in yeah, <laughs> yeah. They'll be in a different world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any thoughts on homeschooling? Because I know some parents would prefer to teach their kids at home because one, nursery school has become very expensive, mm -hmm. and two, there's, you're also very you're attached to your child, so you don't really want to see them go. You feel like maybe they're still too young. What are your thoughts on on homeschooling your kids? Uh, yeah, I I wouldn't mind homeschooling, but my question is, mm. homeschooling this child is going to learn at home. When will this child socialize with others? Are you going to give even a job in school at your home? Uh. Because you the child has gone through the homeschooling throughout. Yeah. He has not learned to live with the community, the society, which is a bigger picture. Mm. What is your prospect for your child? Mm. Because he will be with you with the teacher alone. These other characters for which he can develop, acquire from other children, he will not be able to do that. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, you will you also employ employment in the Yahoo? <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good question. Will you employ your own child? Yeah. Some people can, but will you? Mm. <laughs> yeah. But even in that, even if you have your company, yeah. there are other people who will come from outside yeah. to work. How will this child relate with the others? Yeah, yeah. that's true. That relationship is very important in, and it should be starting from early childhood so yeah. that you know how to socialize and to live with other people. Yes. Yeah. So as an early childhood educator who's around uh, ch children, and toddlers especially mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. how would you say it's... Um, or rather, yeah, how do you, are you supposed to discipline a toddler? Because like you said, the attention span is very little. Yeah. So if I see him playing with a pen, or her playing with a pen, and I don't want her to play with a pen, like how, what's the appropriate way of, dis of teaching discipline to it a toddler? It should be appropriate. <laughs> uh, appropriate <laughs> mm. and timely. Mm, timely. Yeah. Okay. You do the right thing at the right time, because if it's, you find the child picking somebody's pen, and then you wait until evening, then you remind the child that why were you taking the pen? The child would not know. Even if you can at that time, mm. the child would not know why you are caning. Yeah. So it should be immediate and appropriate, depending on age. Mm. Because you cannot hit the child with a big, a big whatever, a rungu or something like that, because he has just picked a pen. Yeah. That's not appropriate. Yeah. And the child will not see why you are doing that. Yeah. So the discipline should also depend on age. Mm and it should be immediate so that the child relates the offense with the 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 the, 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 the what the repercussions the repercussions yeah the consequences so that the, they relate the two yeah yeah you don't wait till evening then you remind the child that you you stole well, you somebody's call name. Yeah. yeah okay so when you speak of age on the same question yeah. mm -hmm. What's the difference between how you would discipline a two-year-old and what you would dis how you discipline a six-year-old? Yeah, there's a big difference. Mm. A, a, a two-year-old does not actually know exactly why you are even doing that. <laughs> but you sh and you should be also, what do we say, you should also be kind. You should not be very harsh on the child. Because at this age, they are just trying out things. Yeah. They don't know this is wrong <laughs> and this is bad. Yeah. They don't, that morality has not come in. Yeah. The difference between wrong and, and, right. And, and right, they do not know yeah. at this age. Mm, mm. So, when you are telling the child this is right, this is wrong, you should also be kind enough. You don't tell it with a lot of force because they don't understand why what, what, are the, what they have done is wrong. Mm. But a six-year-old is somebody who has actually gone to class one. They now differentiate that 
it is wrong to do this and it is right to, to do, do that. this. Yeah. Uh. So the different the, the discipline for these two are different. Yeah. Because this one understands, the other one does not. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. This has been a very informative interview. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think much has changed because uh, you were giving most of the answers that my previous guest was giving as okay. well. So I think we're not doing too badly as a generation ourselves. Okay. Thank <laughs> you so much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next segment. Thanks. Karibuni sana to our Get to Know Your Guest segment. Today I have someone that I uh, admire quite a bit, say, and she's an actress like myself, and she's been on very many shows. You've been on uh, Nairobi Law, she's been on the Makutano Junction, she's been on this tiny little show called Lies at Bind. By tiny little show, I win this big show. <laughs> and it's Irene Ayimba. Karibu mm -hmm. sana. Asante sana. Uh, I've been wanting to have you here for a while, so oh, finally. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> So this is a show for moms, eh? All right. So perhaps you can just tell us about your son. What's his name? Oh. How old is <laughs> Look, I swear this face. Every mom makes it. When I ask them about their child, All right. they light up immediately. No, no, no. That's, uh, yeah, there's, there's something special about having a child. And, yeah. Um, mine, thankfully, I had him when I was really young. I, I kept saying, and up, up until now I keep saying, mm. if I did not have my son at the time when I did, I would have probably never become a mom. Not, at least not yet. Okay. Because, yes, yeah, I was either going to be too young, too busy, or too old. Yeah. I was only going to be three faces to that. Yeah. So, um, bam, um, you're, you're 20 and, whoa, you know, things are happening. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're having this awesome bundle. Yeah. And so he comes out to, to just change your life completely. Mm, you know, there's something true. about becoming a mom that then you totally lose yourself to yeah. this person who your life totally revolves around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did, so you had him before joining the mainstream media, right? Absolutely. Yeah. A really long time ago, really. Mm. Yeah. But then be so be before I could even discover myself. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying, you know, like, the way you, 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 you're thinking, oh, my pals are partying. Oh, yeah. You guys are supposed to be doing what? I have responsibilities of a child. I needed to play rugby. And then I was told, sorry, now you're a mom. So you were playing happened. rugby? I'd, I'd intended to do that. But wow. just before I could, then that happened. And so the dad is like, oh, sorry, that doesn't happen with mothers. I'm like, hey, uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't lose a limb. Uh, but yeah, one of those things. Um, so my son, Stanley, is now 14. He turns 15 in December. Oh my goodness, you're dealing with a teenager. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's, that's another wow. level, yeah. We, we, we have many sections of problems. And uh, the other thing about you being able to see yourself in a smaller person. Mm. Um, if I'm, I'm a very affirmative person and sometimes a handful. So sometimes I get to, <laughs> I get to, I get to find that in my son, Aye. and uh, dealing with all that really requires for you to have like patience and grace. Most of the time, you do some moments, you count one to ten. Yeah. Like yes, God, this is when I do not want to commit murder. Yeah, but <laughs> such is life. You <laughs> love them all the same. At yeah, the end you of the day. do. Yeah. In the industry, how long has it been? How long have you been I've working? I've been in the industry for about nine years now. Okay, so your yeah. son is about five. Yes, yes. So yes, then how, is, how, that is that, how has that journey been? Because, you know, uh, as an artist, mm -hmm. there's many late nights, there's traveling. Mm -hmm. So how, how was that with the um, child? I'm not sure whether it was a blessing or a curse in itself that my son largely grew up at mom's. You know, like usually when you have those kids when, the, when you're fairly young, yeah. there's that potential of you have raising them at home. Yeah. So uh, then I kind of tried to pull him to my side one time to start, try and stay with him. Mm. And then later on, I just had a better awakening and thought, you know, at mom's there appears to be more children, there appears to be more hands. There's an experienced hand in mom. Yeah. Yeah. So somehow, and there were other kids there. Mm. So he sort of stayed at mom's. Mm. And then I did not want to confuse him too much. Mm. So I needed for him to have something stable in terms of residence. So he's been there. So for the most part, I've always had help with that. As mm. in, yeah, he's been at mom's. So pretty much, you know, like uh, I would off, you tell me, Irene, you're going to shoot in Egypt for uh, like a month. And mm. thankfully, I'd, I'd actually up and go. And up and go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, that really was yeah. a blessing then to Absolutely. have such totally. a support system. Totally, totally. Mm. Yeah. And um, what kind of parent are you then right now? Are you Ooh. the laid back one? Are you the tough do no. as I say? Um, and the, the, the things, uh, the, the generations we're talking of now, yeah. do as I say doesn't exactly work. And I've told you his personality is more or less like mine. Yeah. We've, 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 we've had sessions where we talk. Mm. It gets to a point where this is a man. 
So mm. he needs to, yeah, he needs to, you, I do not care how tough you are, mom. I do not care how real you appear to be. I do not care how vast you are with life. I am a man. It is important for me to see a man in someone who's trying to articulate my issues. Mm. So we've had those those areas where now then I need to probably draw back and call his dad and I'm like, you know, you have issues <laughs> to deal with. I'm <laughs> done dealing with this. <laughs> so I'm the kind who has to establish a balance. At least in the days that we live in now, you must. Yeah. You yeah. don't have yeah, you don't have the luxury of being what the mm. missing parent. No. And as an it. as an only child, has that affected his personality as well? Mm, as I've told you. Yeah. Again, the other blessing was he was in an environment ah, where he could many. account for the cousins. So, like, he's, he, thank, thankfully, he's had that opportunity. I would hate for him to have grown alone, mm. really. Mm. I come from a really large family. Mm. So I was trying to imagine a situation where that boy is literally just growing on his own, where he has to only relax friends from school or friends from the neighborhood yeah. and probably having to go out and meet some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would have been nasty. So do you then, do you classify yourself as a single mom? If someone asks you, are you a... I, I, I have a problem responding to that, yeah? I know. Because this guy has, the, fa the father is all over the, 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 you know, like all over the scene, like the father doesn't live in the country. Mm. But then for some reason, I, you know, like I literally have a problem, like uh, today he's just done something that I, I've just looked at his grades and they don't look good and I do not know what to do with him anymore. I've done everything I know to do. Then I would literally, you know, like I would literally communicate that and in the next five, ten. Okay, are you with him? No. I, where can I find him? Is he on phone? Yeah. Then the, he reacts to it immediately. So I, 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 I usually almost do not, I'm not sure whether to say that I'm actually raising a, a, a single parent because really the father is in his life just as much as I would be. Yeah. Almost, almost, it's almost as if it's only that space that's separating them, but they're always the actual touched. physical contact. Yeah, I think they actually speak more than he does me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to my dad. I'm like, okay, uh. done, yeah. I, I don't know what you guys are saying. Um, I, I, Mom, you know, like, yeah, dad is sending some money. If you want him to send some good money, you best talk to me nicely. I'm like, okay. Uh, I was there before you, but, you know. Actually, I was there before you. <laughs> you know, like, oh, seriously, yeah, you, you yeah. didn't tell me, or, you know, if you need to, to do, for this guy to listen to you, you yeah. need to come through me, and then things will work out. But, hey. Yeah. But even even so, even though you have that support of, yeah. of the father, yeah. the child, yeah. is there other moments where you felt like, yo, I don't think I can do this? Because Oh, yes. When we initially broke up, I was still, my, my son was barely two. Mm. Um, and and, and I, I was coming from a background where this guy literally used to, you know, like adore the ground on which we both walked. And this, this child was his life. Mm. So he would do everything from changing the diapers, from washing his son, from waking up in the night and giving the boy milk and then putting him back in his coat. So like I'm waking up in the morning, I'm thinking, whoa, what happened? Did what I happened? just sleep through the night? You know, yeah, like yeah. this boy, is he breathing? Uh. <laughs> I woke up, I fixed him. And, you know, so you come from that background, then you split up and then you know um you're wondering okay how does anyone do this you know it was yeah it was a really tricky balance for me and it it, it really took a lot of crying and not not too many people understood for some reason i was really closed up about it i didn't tell i think because everyone really adored him so it was really difficult for me to tell them that I, he would have been the one who messed mm. of course he knows the truth mm. and i know the truth but the rest of the world doesn't, doesn't appear because the, the dad appeared like this perfect human being so um i wouldn't come and tell them that so a lot of it i have had to deal with myself by yourself yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. wow and yeah, then so with that that was a little difficult but then time time is a healer really yes yeah, so it helped fix that and then when when i was just completely healing and so we were able to start talking talking to each other then he quickly you know like he quickly grabbed the chance it's almost as if he was waiting for someone to just break their eyes mm. like oh i know those are problem and then now he quickly picked up from where he left off and went on with his son like nothing ever happened. Like, oh, yeah. that also is a blessing in disguise because Absolutely. I know many. No, I, I, I feel blessed. I totally, oh, to tell you the truth, I know. I know I am not, I, I am not just serving, serving a journey like any other. Yeah. God has been gracious. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And as far as parenting is concerned and especially with Stanley's dad or oh, his, his, God has been good. Mm. I've, 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 I know, I know, I know that it could definitely be worse it could be worse, worse yes. oh i know of yeah. stories that are way worse yeah. you break up with someone and it's like you've broken up oh, with the know, child as well yeah like uh, oh and he initially tried to pull that on me i think then he realized because he, he as i've told you he, he had done his son so he tried to pull that on me i'm like ah, i'm sorry <laughs> did, 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 did you try that on me <laughs> Shokoni, let me show you how yeah, this let me is show done. you oh my goodness i 
try I, I I I just took off and you know tried to live like nothing was happening and mm. tried to shield everything. But you know at the same time this was a child who really bonded with the dad. So I'm probably thinking he was too young to ask. But I usually want to imagine the times this boy must have been sitting and wondering whatever happened to my father. Yeah, whatever, there you was know. this man yeah, who was yeah, here. So it worries yeah. me like what was happening then. But thankfully he doesn't bring it now. But I'm 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 hoping it's not something that will manifest yeah. later. Yeah. Mm. I'm just careful that that doesn't happen. You and I had have had this discussion before about mm. the importance of a father oh. a father in their child's yes. life. And I'm sure you have something to oh, say oh, about oh, that. Oh, that. A father's I would, blessing. I would say, I would start I would start from here to the back to Please you continue. About the thing. Yeah. Um what I, what I know is, you, 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 uh, clearly our DNA is our dad's. Mm. Why? I, I think there was a specific reason. I just, I just think there's something about God ensuring that a man is in his image first and that a father sires and then his chromosomes determine our gender. There's just too much from biological, um, from the scientific point of view, up until the point where you're born. And the authority of a father for me is not anything that anyone can ever uh, negotiate. Mm. It doesn't matter whether yes, it doesn't matter whether this guy is a top notch Jewish style or working which kind of job. But at the end of the day, it's what he symbolizes. You know, mm -hmm. makes all the difference. So there's this something about about the confidence that a father inspires in in, in a child's life. I know that I'm everything I am. And whenever anyone wants to imagine I'm too strong and probably men bringing issues about it and catching feelings, I tell them, sorry, can I give you a number to a gentleman who mm. I think is responsible for all of this? Mm. We were born six girls and four boys. In this house... Excuse me, you were ten? Yes. Okay. You know, like a total of that. All right. And I'm the last girl. <laughs> ah, so am I. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> something about, about, about a father. Yeah? And I, yeah, I, know, I know you're really affected by the loss of your father. God bless his soul. Mm. But uh, there's just something about him. And that, you know, like uh, come on, that know. last one whom everyone wants to imagine is a brat nini nini. Yeah. That named her for my dad's mother. You know, so uh, please, just so you know, <laughs> she'll be everything else, but you don't, you don't go touching my mommy around. Mm. So besides that, all our girls, anytime we presented our report forms, it was those ones of, um, why didn't you perform? It was never that, oh, you're a girl, so it will be easier. Uh -huh. like, no, I provide you with a platform, all of you guys. It's just like the boys are even better. Mm. So no one should ever tell you differently. Hey, my mom growing up, who, who thought I'm, 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 I'm also, my daddy did. So we, who are you again? Who are you? Who are yeah. you again to come and tell me the contrary? Sorry. Yeah. So I am a star. And according to my father, I am a star. So and he deal can't with that. be wrong. Shh. So deal with that. <laughs> Sorry. So, you know, yeah. So, yeah, I guess coming from that background and then I've seen what he's done over time to ensure that the family actually stands firm. And then all these instances, I've, I've tried to, I've, it's something I've totally uh, deeply researched on because mm. I'm usually a very deep person. Mm. So I've looked at it and uh, the role of a father is one that is totally not, you know, like it cannot be disputed at any level. A father, uh, a father not being present in a child's life or even in a family is just totally a mess. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's something about it. God will probably one day tell us. And we Hopefully. Actually meet him, but uh, hey. You would, know. You then, then, uh, would you then advocate for staying together with someone just for the sake of the kids? Um, no. Not when, not when you can lose your life doing that. I, I, I sometimes actually look back and say, um, I, I, I had an instance where my mom left my dad when, when, we were nine, when I was nine. Mm. And of course we were shattered, we were broken, and, 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 and those many days we were crying. And I know if I deeply remember that day, because I remember it like it was yesterday. You, you always know. remember the day your parents split up. You I know, remember yes, mine too. Absolutely. And I know that um, I, I but the, looking back, and I now later on looking at it deeply, because mom would come around because she really tried. She'd come around and she'd hold us and, you know, like we'd cry together. And she's like, I wish you, you know, you, you should have told your dad to be good at, to, to be good to me, you know. And I know the times my mom used to really, really be beaten up and things. Looking back and knowing how couples kill each other, had my mom stayed on, she'd have been dead by now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sometimes grateful. If you see it's, it isn't working, and especially when it is abusive, no. no. You do not want your children experiencing that. I am so terrified. You don't want your children having a childhood they have to recover you, you, from. You know, I, keep saying I, I, to, I haven't, I don't, I don't believe I've totally recovered. Me neither. I'm, I'm in a spot where I literally go to a house and say even my bro's house and um, should, should, should the house be so quiet, you know, they're, they're probably upstairs and there's so much silence. Mm. I'm almost like careful not to hear any commotion and things like uh, up until now. Yeah. You know, and I am terrified of a man who 
almost even comes close to showing signs of violence. Mm. I leave. <laughs> It's not anything. I know, even something as simple as snatching a you know, phone yes. or I'm yes. like, whoa. Like, like, yeah, like, did, I, did you just do that? Yeah. That doesn't happen around me. So you, you do not want to expose your child to st stuff like true, that. True, very yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So then ha what advice, lastly, yeah, uh, the last question, I think mm -hmm. we're out of time. What advice would you give to parents who are co-parenting? Because that's the trend now. People, are, everyone mm -hmm. is co-parenting. Do you have any advice? Uh, um, I keep saying, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fairly religious person, yeah, um, because I do not believe that I can draw any of my inspirations from any place else. Mm. So um, let's pray for our marriages. No child, every child is here because two adults deliberately brought their child forth. Yeah. So what is this about you that is so big? Mm. Or what is this about you that has to be so much about you mm. that you do not want to think about this person who potentially will wonder the re for the rest of their lives what was it about probably them me yeah that did not work out for them enough for the family to be together like any other mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. and then we've had instances i'm sorry i, I, I risk uh, naming names but we've had instances where there are schools um catholic schools mm. They do not admit children from broken homes. That's true. Why do you do that? I know. Which child would have wanted to ever be raised yeah. by, by, by separate parents? So a child has scored. I had an incident where my nephew scored marks specifically for a school. He knew for a fact, this is the school I want to go for. So I am working hard. I may have it in me, but I'm working hard. I know this is the school I want to go for. The child scored grades. We took it there. He went for the interview. He obviously aced it. Eventually, they dilly-dallied. They denied him a chance when my brother, who had actually served as a non-marrying member of the Opus Day for seven years. Mark you, my brother also came from a broken home. When he was serving as a non-marrying member of the Opus Day, they did not have a problem with the fact that he was from a broken home. They could accept him then. But then, this is a child who potentially just wants to make mm. his life and his dream from an institution he believes in. Cannot be admitted to that institution because he comes from a broken home. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think my, my nephew was broken so much to the extent, because there are times I speak to him, and I can feel the kind of bitterness he feels towards his parents now. I know. is so different from what I knew before. Yeah. So could this have inspired that? So people ought not do that. No grown-up should ever victimize a child who did not know what happened and potentially will never have responses for what two grown adults are doing mm. in, 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 uh, in circumstances that he just found himself in. Mm. Why would you do that? So to this day, I'm very unforgiving to those institutions. And I said, I'm going to go to the end of the earth to make sure a child does not stay, feel victimized for the rest of their lives. Because I do not believe Brian has totally recovered. I do not believe he will recover. He, he, yeah, he went to a school now he really enjoys and is celebrated. But then to think that he was almost working his entire life to be in that particular institution and then be denied a chance because of something his parents did yeah. that was beyond him. Uh -uh, that is wrong. Wow. Totally wrong. Please, sister. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you know, like, we could have a whole deal talking about this. Yeah. It's something I'm following up. Okay. I'm not, I'm not leaving it at that. Because wow. children ought not know. We, we are radicalizing our children. Yeah. We are literally... Imagine if, if one time, God forbid, she that child to decide, I want mm. to do something extreme. Mm -hmm. Goes to that institution and does something extreme. Because Who, of that. Who's going to blame, be, be blamed? Wow. Okay, unfortunately, we're, we're <laughs> yeah, out of time. time. We but we have to do my last segment. Deep, it's called okay. Mommy on Fire. Oh, I'm going right. to ask you seven questions. Right. Chop, chop. Try, answer try, them try, quickly, try. quickly. Right. Sour. Okay, let's try Aya, Repeat after me. All right. Milk, milk, milk. Milk, milk, milk. What does a cow drink? What does a cow drink? What does a cow drink? Water. Yay! I really thought you'd say milk. <laughs> <laughs> Most people say milk. All right, number two. How many dwarves are in the story of Snow White? Each seven. Yes. What is six times six? Twelve. Uh, 36. <laughs> Whoa, 36. Oh my goodness. How did you do that? You got okay, all right. Number oh, four. <laughs> Name an animal that carries its young one in a pouch. Uh, what, are, what are you called? Ka no, kangaroo. Yes, kangaroo. <laughs> what animal is Winnie the Pooh? Mm. Uh -uh, pass. A bear. It's a bear. Okay. Ah, yeah. A caterpillar turns into a. Butterfly. Yeah. Name three characters of the show Lies That Mind. Ooh. Esther, Edith, Joy, Salome. <laughs> I could, you know, I could go on. Yeah, you have six over seven. Oh, thank You've you. done well. So that bear thing. That's, that's a cartoon character, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I oh, me, Acha is a Yo, please come back to the show. Absolutely.
Yeah, I'd yeah. love to talk more about this. I know, I know. Perhaps Thank in the presence of me. other moms. Absolutely. Asante Absolutely. sana. Asante sana for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, I'll see you guys in the next segment. <laughs> It's my most favorite part of the show, and today I have a co-host who doesn't know she's my co-host yet. <laughs> but we're joined by Little Star Kids Modeling Agency. Have I gotten the name right? Yes? Yes, Little Star uh, Modeling Academy. Modeling Academy. It's not an agency, it's an academy. And I want to start us off by having uh, two of the parents who are joining us today introduce themselves, and also the um, CEO... Director. Yes, director, and one of their teachers, yes? Yeah. Okay, so maybe we can start with the parent. I'm Belinda Barasa, and I'm a parent at Little Star Modeling Academy. Okay. I'm Lydia Gutu, a parent too at uh, Little Star Modeling Academy, or uh, SMA, as my daughter calls it. Okay. <laughs> and uh, my name is Yuri, yeah. uh, and uh, I'm a co-founder and the director of this uh, Little Star Modeling Academy. Okay. I'm Pascaline Chabet, a high fashion model. And I'm the trainer for the kids. Okay. Yeah. So then now it's the kids' turns. My name is Samora Chris Malik, and I'm a VP at Little Star Mole Modeling Academy. My name is Lama. It's okay. Talk. My name is Lama, and and all the time I go to school. <laughs> 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 Give her. My name is Ashley Kagendo. I am a pupil in the Modeling Academy. My name is Nicole Njiri. I'm a pupil in Little Star Modeling Academy. My name is Isla Mara, and I'm a model in Little Star. And you, little girl? Hello. I'm a name a tell you. So you are a model? I'm a model. <laughs> <laughs> I have the best co-host ever. <laughs> So Yuri, maybe we can start with you. Okay. What does your academy offer? Well, uh, we start uh, our uh, Little Star Modeling Academy a few years ago. Mm. It was a long period to uh, to start it because uh, before we even don't think about it. Mm. But uh, as soon as we uh, received this uh, little young uh, girl, mm. we realized that um, it is a quite uh, lack of uh, good cloth uh, in uh, Nairobi. The only one big one was uh, uh, maybe one or two brands uh, which we can um, buy for her. Then we uh. understand that uh, the, the, uh, the shops which uh, try maybe to promote themselves, they don't have that uh, possibility because there is no uh, trained kids for that. Yeah. As, as what we uh, have, for example, in Russia, me, I'm from Russia, and uh, um, most most of the shops they have their own cloth collections, which are uh, photo shoots from the with the kids to demonstrate it. Mm. Also, uh, the new collections designers they don't have an opportunity to present it nicely because there is no kids who can do it nicely. Mm. We are not talking about the. Um, those funny red carpet shows when, which happens from, ti to, from time to time uh, in Nairobi. We are talking about the professional way and f e even the modeling, it's a very hard and professional um, uh, subject of doing. You can ask uh, Chibet, she trained a lot and uh, every time uh, she, she get new skills. Same what we try to do with the kids. We try to explain them how to move, how to pose. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm not a m model myself. It was <laughs> a ch no? ch bad girl, <laughs> but that's that's what uh, um, that's what we try to do, and uh, we already have our own uh, fashion shows, uh, which calls uh, Cool Kids Fashion Weekend Africa, uh, and the designers and the shops which work with us, they very appreciate the way how uh, our models. Uh, uh, do that. Uh, they understood that it is mm, very different from trained and untrained kids. Yeah. Uh, we also make our uh, shows on the, let's say, other events, uh, like uh, Little uh, Little Miss uh, Kenya. Yeah. And uh, we, we did uh, our presentation, our uh, kids make the runway there, and the uh, parents of our kids, they, they saw 
and they, they, they come to me after that and say, now we understand what we are paying for. Mm. Because there is a very big difference between uh, nice, cute, uh, but not professional uh, runways and really professional, professional ones. Yes. yes. What does the, the training entail? Like, what, what does a normal training day look like? Okay, for the first time, yeah. uh, for a kid comes on day one, yeah. first of all, she'll start wondering what's happening. Yeah. Like, why are you telling me to move my hips? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are hips? Why should I walk in a straight line? So yeah. the first basic thing we always do is like explain to them who is a model and what is a runway. Those are the two basic things they yeah. should understand. Yeah. So you start with a, a runway, which is, uh, what is a runway? A runway is a straight line that you walk. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's the first basic thing they should understand, that a runway is a straight line. Okay. So after they understood that, they now know, like, if I'm a model, there's a certain way I'm supposed to move. In and, most and in a straight line. Most and in a straight means. line, because yeah. you can't go in a zigzag way. Yeah. Yeah, so those are the basic things we do on the first day. Mm. The runway line and who is a model. Mm. And what if someone who has been there, let's say for a month, when I come in the morning as a student, what happens? Oh, uh, they'll just show you like, this is my first pose. This is the first pose you do okay. when you start the runway. Mm. These are middle pose. There's also an end pose. Mm. And these are certain way they move their hips, mm. like a model uh, walks. Mm. <laughs> so you can see the difference like from the first day. Mm. She can explain to you who is a model. Mm -hmm. She can work very nicely like a high fashion model. Yeah. So um, you'll get a very big difference from the first day to the last day. Mm. Apart from offering these services to these brands that sell clothes, for the child especially, what do you think is the importance of having these extra things that they do outside of school? Uh, this is a good question mm. and uh, I, I think it will be a good answer. Mm. Because uh, of course, not all the kids who train through uh, our school will be uh, professional models uh, the at, the end, at the end of their life. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the good things out of these trainings uh, is uh, self-confidence, mm -hmm. which uh, each and every kid mostly receive after that. And uh, maybe for me, I will advertise uh, our school um, th through those words, but all of the parents mentioned mm. that that's what they realize after this uh, three months of our training. Uh, the feeling of uh, confidence is increasing very much. The kids, um, s some of the kids who join us, um, our school, they're more or less confident, mm. but we have very good examples, like two or three kids were very shiny, very, like when, when they come the first time, they hide behind the mom. Mm. Uh, they can't say hi, uh, hi to the teacher, to me. Mm. But even after one week of the training, mom said, wow, she like opened herself. Opens yes, up. And uh, that's that's very important uh, thing which uh, we also try to give uh, kids. It's, it's not what we train them, self-confidence, no. Mm. It comes through those uh, exercises. exercises. Um, modeling, um, how to present themselves, you know, it's very difficult to, to go on the red carpet when everybody look at you, when the cameras are there, when they, uh, everybody try to smile, to say something, and you need to be very concentrated and uh, don't pay attention to, to uh, those things. Mm. That's what gives you and train this confident. Uh, yeah. And also, uh, we are not trained only the modeling uh, as, a, as a runway, we also train them photo posing. Oh. It is also very important uh, and uh, maybe you, you can see the difference when people do the models uh, make it professionally or unprofessional. Mm -hmm. That's what we also train them. We train them to be professional uh, posers in front of the camera, how to work with the camera. Okay. And uh, what about you moms? Oh, welcome back. Welcome back, my co-host. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Apart from what he's mentioned, the self-confidence, do you notice any other benefits? Yes, I do. Mm. For me, most important is that she has, she has fun doing it and uh, she looks forward to the sessions mm. and then it has exposed her to different things about, uh, 
apart from school mm. and what we do at home mm. and it also takes her mind away from too much television because yeah. like they train on Saturdays and it's, it's for the better part of the Saturday mm. and the events are on Saturdays mm. so really for her that take occupies her mind in a different way and uh, she's a shy girl before she got here but now she can pose better is that you yes ah, and you do look like ah <laughs> yeah so really they have really brought them up properly and then sharpened that thing that as a parent you you notice your child has yeah. but there's nothing you can do about it yeah. but they have brought it out mm. yes what about um do you have any challenges does it maybe take up too much of her time what do you think Oh, I cannot really call it a challenge, but yes, it does take up most of much, most of my time over the weekends. Like it, to, it, this year, it has taken up almost all my weekends. <laughs> I have to make time and sure. He also reminds me, Mom, you know, on Saturday we are doing this. We are going for this. Okay, is yours, uh, you? he's okay. my son. <laughs> it has like, yeah. it has <laughs> built his confidence <laughs> a lot. He is more outgoing. His also sense of fashion and style has changed I a can lot. I see. It's quite nice. And it has also helped him in his social skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you have any advice uh, for moms who maybe want their kids to start doing such extracurricular activities? Well, I would tell all moms and all parents out there, if a child shows an interest in anything or if you realize there's something out there that a child can do apart from schoolwork, mm. please try and encourage them because it builds not only their, it builds their esteem, it builds their character. Mm. And uh, apart from academics, it's also good for socialization. Yeah. Uh, it builds their minds. And you never know because uh, nowadays not everything is pegged on academics. It could also uh, pose a career for them as well mm. in the future. Mm. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the star of the show. So where are you guys located? Okay, we um, we start from the um, like uh, location uh, near China Center. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, Russian uh, embassy territory there. And they uh, kindly allowed us to, to make those uh, uh, training to provide them. Yeah. Uh, it's very safety <laughs> territory, so yeah. we yes, so we, we invite uh, parents. They can even uh, leave their kids there yeah. and then go uh, for two hours around shopping or whatever. It's uh, quite uh, strategic location yeah. in terms of shopping. Yeah. Uh, th then uh, we have also another location where uh, on Emily Hotel. Uh, they, they also kindly provide us a good uh, place on the rooftop. It's a very nice uh, place. We also do did a few um, programs there. Mm. Uh, yes. You mentioned something about three months. Does uh, a, s a, a course take yes, three months? Uh, for now, the basi uh, basic course uh, takes three months. That's the period where, where we can uh, teach kids to do this modeling, photo posing, already nicely mm. where where everybody can see the difference and they already can participate mm. on the shows on the uh, photo shoots we already did a few photo shoots for the uh, shops some of these models participate there mm -hmm. um, on, on, the, on those photo shoots and uh, the owners of the shops were very satisfied with the work what mm. uh, what they uh, did for them mm -hmm. uh, then we, we have also some uh, extended advanced courses which takes also, also around three months. And uh, maybe uh, I can tell that uh, we uh, intake uh, kids from three years old up to 14. Mm. So this is the age uh, range which we are targeting in. So if someone, uh, if a parent at home who is watching right now has some questions, maybe uh, regarding timings, the uh, costs, how mm -hmm. can they reach you guys? Uh, well, we have a uh, updated uh, everyday updated Facebook page okay. where all the contacts are but I don't know if it is allowed I can say that yeah you can say they, they, uh, <laughs> you, you, you can call us on 0775-777-555 you can call and uh, ask any questions you can uh, type us a message uh, in the Facebook page we usually reply within the one or two hours oh. usually at the end of the day because uh, during the day we have something to do mm. else but uh, at the end of the day we reply to each Okay. Requests. Okay. Sidi, what do you like most about being in the academy? Um, the confidence and fashion. The fashion? And yeah. what about you? What do you like it's so much? Fun. Mm. And you show new style. Yeah. And you? It shows you how to be photogenic. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> I like that, yeah. Okay. Lamar, why are you kissing my elephant? You don't want to talk? Okay, then give the mic to your friend. Then give me back my ball. Fa because it is fun and it's about fashion. And it's about fashion. Okay, so I think it's time for you guys to show us this talent that you have. Excuse me, co-host, please come back. Oh, Papa, she doesn't want to come. Okay, it's fine. Yes, so good. It's been a very, very, very lovely show. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I want these lovely, lovely uh, young ones to help me say goodbye. Okay, so one, two, three, go. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.